throw to another redhead now. Wesley Amor from Bayer and Ross Newton are uh, going to be out at the um, the Hopefield right. trial on site. Bayer are going to yeah. have a new... Uh, I'm not sure. Do you want to take it away, Wes? I'm not sure what I'm allowed to say. There'll be a new pre-emergent from Bayer, if you want to introduce that. All right. Thanks, Paul. Uh, yeah, well, here we are just north of Corowa in one of uh, Rosie's paddocks, which is an excellent spot for a for us for access, close handy to, to have a look at this, this new pre-emergent from Bayer. So, yeah, I might hand it over to Wes and he'll just give us a, a bit of a rundown and then we'll have a look through a few of the plots. All right, thanks very much, uh, Corbels, for inviting me to talk today. Stump, I feel like I'm doing a bit of speed dating now in the next seven minutes, so we'll see how we go. Um, all right, so, yeah, just... Um, I'll talk a little about this about this new product uh, called Matino Complete. So... Um, We've been working on this product probably for about three or four years. Uh, it's a new uh, herbicide, uh, um, pre-emergent, early post-emergent herbicide. That's a combination of three actives. Um, I'll talk about the actives in a minute, but uh, we're going for registration in wheat and barley and hopefully for disc machines as well. Um, has activity on a wide range of grass weeds and uh, broadleaf weeds as well. So I'll talk a bit about it as we go through the plots on that. Um, so the combination, so it's three actives, uh, two we currently have in Australia and a new active called a clonophon, which is a, a new, totally new active for Australia, new mode of action. Uh, it's classed as an SPS inhibitor. So what that is, it, it works on the photosynthetic pathway. So there's no other active in Australia in that class at the moment. So uh, the key to a clonophon, the exciting thing about a clonophon, it doesn't break down with sunlight, doesn't volatilize. Um, it has activity on grass and broadleaf weeds as well. Um, the key to it though is to try to get good film on top of the soil surface, much like diflufenicin. And um, it's a well-known synergist with other modes of action. So um, yeah, we'll walk you through the plots, have a bit of a talk, talk about it, and then we'll take some questions if anyone's keen. So, um, all right, so Ross, we'll start in the untreated first. So this is the untreated plot. Uh, it's uh, obviously wheat on Rosie's paddock. I think the history last year was canola. Um, yeah. Uh, and wheat, and, wheat the year before that. Yep. Yep. So what we've got here is we've got some uh, water weeds and that uh, in the in the furrow here. You can see some toad rush, uh, a bit of loose strife coming through. Generally, the rye grass is not too bad. There's a little bit of tillage stuff here. Um, but if you look outside the plot. Um, you've got quite a lot of germinating uh, rye out here where, um, and I'll show you through the plots, you'll be able to see where it has, and the product hasn't been incorporated. You'll be able to see its efficacy on weeds where you've got just the film on top of the soil surface. So, all right, well, we'll move up. Just while we're going, Wes, I'll just stick a photo up of the, of the uh, a bit of info. So that's untreated. Yep. Now we move into the um, two Matino treatments here. So we've got a incorporated by sowing 750 mils and we've got a leader incorporated by sowing. But I guess if you look at the plot, your spray is from uh, peg to peg. So you can see compared to the untreated, you've got absolutely no weeds here, which is a great sign. If you move into the incorporated by going into the tine rows and that, you can see You've got generally good weed control, a little bit of rye here on the shoulder, um, but pretty good weed control. So as you can see, you've got good, it's this shoulder in the, in the furrow is where you seem to lose weed control. Um, and I'll show you some next treatments up here. Like Sakura in high rainfall, we'll move into here. And I guess with the Matino, you can see it's moved into the, into the furrow quite nicely. What we'll do now is we'll move up to the uh, EPE treatments just to show you the control. Uh, we got the EPE being early post emergent. Was Correct. That? Yeah, yeah. It was actually went on at uh, forty percent first leaf to merge, sixty percent non emerge. So it's probably a little bit earlier than what we'd want it to be applied. We'd probably want it from one to two leaf of the crop onwards. So, um, but yeah, we'll we'll move up to that. I think we've got a slide up on incorporated by sowing. So you can see, uh, 
You can see a, here that the uh, average of five rate, trials, is it? Yeah, yeah. So this is two year old data. So this was the code name for Matino before it before we've uh, applied for registration. So um, we've got about 24, 25 trials after last year's data to compare. And what we have found is the low rate of the Matino is equivalent to, um, in, for uh, grass weaker trial, equivalent to the 118 grams of Sakura. And then at the high rate, we're probably finding incorporated by sowing about another five to 6% increase control on grass weeds. So what we'll do now is we'll move up to the, um, early post-emergence So again, as you, you look across, across the plots, you can see you've got uh, two layers of trefflin up front and then uh, Matino applied 750 mil rate, which is the low rate. And over here, we've got the one litre rate. Um, again, trefflin applied at sowing and then at just probably one leaf or sub one leaf of the crop, we've come in with the, um, the high rate. So the idea of this is the treff land's going to be there for the start, or you could use box of gold or Avidex up front. Gives you time to get some sort of like a primer pre-emergent down to get grass weed control before you can come back and, and, and apply the Matino post. The idea behind this is you're going to get better control in the furrow. If we zoom in there. Yeah, what we're trying to just say there is that using the post-emergent application, you get a nice film of the product across the shoulder, um, in the furrow, and right across the sowing width. And we're probably seeing anywhere up to 12 weeks residual control on broadleaf weeds um, when used in a, a EPE timing. So what we find in IBS timing is that you're sort of probably breaking that film with the clonophon, and we're probably you know, you're probably losing a bit of broadleaf activity using it um, IBS versus post. But you probably find that IBS, you get better weed, grass weed control incorporated by sowing. Weed and barley, Wiz? Yeah, at this stage, we're going for registration for weed and barley, tine and disc machines. So oh, my gut feel is the barley registration will be at the low rate, the 750 mils incorporated by sowing. But um, look, launch date's 2022, um, large scale demos next year, 2021. Uh, just a couple other questions I had, Wes. You mentioned um, it'll be registered in time and disc systems. Yep. And also what about um, grazing with holding periods with um, some of the uh, grazing cereals? Yeah, so we're going for, a, we're going for a, like a six weeks, six week uh, withholding period for grazing at this stage, so. Okay, we'll just chuck up another uh, one more slide that Wes um, sent me through the other day. Um, just showing the residual control. Righto. So I'm just going to draw on this. So this is a picture from um, just near Corop. We've got a good trial there. This is Matino at one litre, uh, not incorporated by sowing at all. This has just been put on post. Um, and all this to the side here is all radish, um, you know, residual radish that's come up in the paddock. And this is, this actual pa uh, photo here is at nine weeks. Um, I looked at it yesterday, we're out to 12 weeks and it's still um, controlling, um, cot, uh, you know, cod lead and radish trying to poke through. So I think uh, that's about it. Uh, looks, looks exciting, Wes. Um, yeah, it just gives us another tool, I guess, um, for... Uh, for mixing some of these new pre-emergences that are coming along. And thanks very much to Wes and to Bayer for, um, for yeah, letting us have this site and, and have a look at it today. Um, so if there's no questions or anything, Lavo, it's um, back to you in the studio. The uh, central commentary position. Thanks, Rusko. Before you go, what weeds is it going to miss, Wes, rather than saying what it does? Like, if it's going to get all those radish top weeds, all our water weeds... Yep. Nearly all our grass weeds. What are you a bit doubtful on that it's going to miss? Yeah, great question. Um, look, I see a bit of a rate response between 750 mils and a litre. I, I think at 750 mils, it's it's probably not going to get uh, high enough activity on on wire weed and and uh, wild oats. But at the litre rate, 
Uh, look, I mean, there's so many weeds to, you know, what hasn't it? Well, I haven't seen it work on sour sob. Um, I actually, yeah, it doesn't do sour sob. But, you know, some of the key weeds growers around here have, are seeing is, you know, pretty well great activity on all your grass weeds, maybe wild oats, might be suppression, brome suppression, but, uh, you know, like things like prickly lettuce, milk thistle, wire weed, water weeds, uh, you know, radish probably isn't as big as it used to be, but, you know, things like cape weed, uh, paddo, chickweed, um, erodium, you know, it's, yeah, it's, it's, it's hard to, you know, I haven't seen every broadleaf weed, but yeah, no, it's looking really promising at the moment. I, th I think the one thing I'd make a comment, Stump, if I can, is, is probably just the, the EPA timings, just, you know, getting growers used to maybe coming in at one leaf of the crop. They've got a lot of other things they'll be doing on the farm and just trying to get, make sure they manage their time to get back if they're going to use this product at the EPA timing, I reckon is going to be critical for you guys to be talking to growers about. If it continues to look like it is though, I don't think it's, that's going to be a massive issue because you know, the weed control is just, yeah, it's going to be the Rolls Royce treatment from what I'm seeing from that, some of those new actives coming through. Yeah, no, no, other, no other comments? Anyway, uh, you know, 20... probably, yeah, 2022 commercial release. I'm sure there's some questions about what it's going to cost. I've got, I've got no idea at the moment, so. Yeah, I, um... no. All good.